The third video for Unit 5 is our video on World War I in the trenches. The last video we saw about the Sleafen plan and how the failure of it led to trench warfare. So we're going to learn a little bit about the uh, unfortunate events involved with trench warfare today. Uh, so, and the left sides will be explained at the end of this video. Oh, that's a little mistake. All right, so let's look at trench warfare. Now, as in um, Crash Course History told you, that there was over 25,000 miles of trenches, people think. And this is a little diagram to show you sort of how they were laid out. Now, of course, they weren't always all the same. But you had like a front-line trench, and you couldn't just advance, because if you got up with the new technology and machine guns above the World of War I, you'd be shot down. So that's why these lines didn't really move very much. And the area between the two forces were known as no man's land. So here's some things about some of the unfortunate events um, involved in the trenches. For one, we had the problem of body lice. And if you read here, it tells you some of the, the parts about it and why it was so um, unpleasant. They tried to treat soldiers. Um, they would take them out of the trenches, um, put like, chemicals through their clothing, uh, give them special baths to get rid of the lice. But within a few days, um, that pretty much all came back. 97% of most of the soldiers in the trenches were believed to be inflicted with um, body lice. And that could cause fever, actually. Then you also have the problem of rats. Uh, primarily in the Western Front, you had the problem with rats, but this was also a problem in battles in Italy and other places. Um, they thrived off the trenches, off the old cans they um, people discarded. There was no efficient way to get rid of food waste um, in World War I, uh, even the dead bodies. You see here in French that la chasse aux rats means a rat hunting. And if you can read French below, it says, you know, as the winter is approaching and before it gets too cold, they're trying to kill these rats. They, were, they couldn't shoot at rats because they had to preserve their ammunition. And these rats would um, attack wounded soldiers. You know, uh, imagine having your leg paralyzed, not being able to shake off a rat gnawing um, at your leg. Uh, one pair of rats could cause 880 offspring in a year, so you see why that's a very significant problem. If you look online, there's awful videos of dead people in the trenches with where they still have flesh, but there's rats like sticking out their skulls. I didn't want to show it, you this because it actually was a little bit too revolting for some, I thought, but they are out there. Usually they would attack um, the deceased's eyes first and then bury into the body of the dead soldiers. So obviously uh, rats were an issue. So were things like frogs, um, certain types of beetles, but the rats, because they lived off all that dead f um, people and the food was the worst. If you see that online, that's actually animated. All right, so trench foot. This is when a, a fungal infection um, on the soldier's feet from being exposed to damp, right, as the trenches filled up with water that didn't drain properly and the cold. Um, Often the boots didn't fit them properly, which would cause cuts, um, blisters from marching. And when you add to that, that to it, these infections could get very serious. Um, the British in 1990, I'm sorry, in 1914 alone had 20,000 casualties just from trench foot. Um, they tried to do things by like uh, changing their socks as often as they could so that they wouldn't um, stay wet also to apply whale grease to the feet would help protect them as well. So here's some things here. If you have never had trench foot described to you, I will tell you, your feet swell to two or three times the normal size and go completely dead. You could stick, not feel a thing. If you are fortunate enough not to lose your feet and the swelling begins to go down, it is then the intolerable, indescribable agony begins. I have heard men cry and even scream with the pain. All right, here's another one. My memories are of sheer terror and the horror of seeing men sobbing because they had trench foot that had turned gangrenous. They knew they were going to lose a leg. Memories of lice in your clothing driving you crazy, filth and lack of privacy, of huge rats that showed no fear of you as they stole your food rations, and cold, deep, wet mud everywhere. And of course, corpses. i never seen a dead body before I went to war, but in the trenches, the dead are lying all around you. You could be talking to a the fellow next to you when suddenly he'd be hit by a sniper and fall dead beside you. And there he'd stay for days. So you see, besides the trench foot, besides rats, besides body lice, um, you know, losing your friends, um, being away from family, um, having 
the corpses of your dead comrades next to you for a long time sometimes before they could dispose of them. Sometimes they would give them shallow graves and then other um, artillery would actually blow them back up. Very awful stories. Dysentery was another problem. This had to deal with the lack of proper latrines. Obviously, if you're in these trenches, uh, cleanliness being an issue. An axe would be the means of filling the Dixies, which was a pot, with lumps of ice. We would use it for tea several days until one chap noticed a pair of boots sticking out and discovered they were attached to a body. So they were using ice from, for their tea, which was around a dead body. So you see the lack of hygiene that could lead to dysentery. And they're also more susceptible to dy dysentery because of, of nutritional deficiencies. And um, people did die from this, right? You can dehydrate. Shell shock. We might now call shell shock um, PTSD post-traumatic stress disorder. The type of shell shock um, here, which was very new um, as far as actually looking at this as a problem with World War I, and it did um, come about because of the constant shelling. Um, the British alone had 80,000 cases of shell shock in its first year, um, and this shell shock is, is a reaction. It says here, it is heartbreaking to watch a shell shock case. The terror is indescribable. The flesh on their faces shake in fear, and their teeth continually chatter. Shell shock was brought about in many ways. Loss of sleep, continually being under heavy shell fire, the torment of the lice, irregular meals, nerves always on end, and the thought always in the man's mind that the next minute was going to be his last. So you can see here many of the psychological symptoms with shell shock, but there are also physical ones. Um, they, some people thought that maybe their brains actually... Um, from the bombardment, there are cerebral lesions that caused it. Or from breathing in all of the carbon monoxide from explosions. Um, there were 19 British hospitals set up in World War I just for shell shock victims. And they were sort of labeled an S, and they did not get pensions, right? Because they said, well, this isn't a wound from a weapon. So you can see there was that stigma, at unfortunately, attached to them as well. Sometimes shell shock victims were killed by their comrades if they were making noise or if they saw them to a threat. Sometimes they were executed for cowardice, right? So um, a very legitimate problem um, during World War I. Here's some more um, photos of life in the trenches. If you see on the bottom, what he's standing on is a duck board. That was to try to provide um, something to stand on so maybe you won't get trench foot. Zug there in German, that means listen, right? Always listen for someone coming across no man's land so that you would not get attacked. You don't want that to happen. Sandbags and things. Now for your left side, you're going to write a letter. It should take up about the whole page, right, as if you were in the trenches and you're writing a letter home. Mention some of the problems from this video that that soldier encountered. You could be from whatever country you want, French, British, German, whatever. See you next class.